After a two-hour meeting of the energy ministers of the member states, an agreement was reached. The 15% reduction in gas consumption will be calculated on the basis of the average consumption in a given country over the last five years. The winter is coming uh, and we don't know how cold it will be, but what we know for sure that Putin will continue to play his uh, dirty games uh, in misusing and blackmailing uh, by uh, gas supplies. And uh, this is something we have to prepare our households and economies for, and we have to protect them. However, there will be some exceptions to this rule. For example, countries that are not connected to other member states by gas networks would be exempt from the compulsory gas reductions. A lot of compromises in this text now. This is the way how Europe operates. The problem might occur. This, all the exemptions are causing too much of a bureaucracy so that we are too slow in times of crisis. This is a danger, but the exemptions in itself, they are reasonable. They can be explained. Yesterday, the Russian company Gazprom, responsible in Australia for gas transmission via Nord Stream 1, announced the commencement of the next stage of maintenance work. As a result, gas supplies through this pipeline are limited to 20% of the maximum capacity. Yesterday's announcements by Gazprom underline once again that uh, we have to be ready for the possible supply cuts from Russia at any moment and to be ready for that. The idea of compulsory reduction of gas consumption was opposed by Spain, Portugal, Greece and Poland. Member states may also request an exemption from the compulsory savings obligation if they have exceeded their gas storage filling targets and use it for critical infrastructure. Before the Council meeting, Minister of Climate and Environment Anna Moskva said that Poland had achieved its negotiating goals. There are no reduction targets for Poland in this proposal, and this is what we expected, an understanding of our situation, but most of all we expected an understanding of our refusal to accept these ideas of compulsory reductions. In the face of Russian gas blackmail, Europe is looking for other sources of energy resources. The stance of Berlin, which first made the argument that countries such as Poland should share gas, is surprising. Meanwhile, Germany does not want to abandon its plans to shut down the last three nuclear power plants by the end of this year. The Polish left-wing advocates that Poland should lease them. In this situation, it is irresponsible to switch off state safe energy sources, and such sources are nuclear power plants. The idea was positively received by most political circles in Poland. The possible closure of German nuclear power plants will be a purely ideological move, said Jakub Wiech. Every megawatt hour is worth its weight in gold for Europeans, and a loss would be an irreparable damage to the European energy system. The compromise on gas supplies assumes that the European Commission will be able to propose a trigger warning state, which would mean a mandatory reduction of gas consumption. The decision will be made by the European Council, a European Union body composed of member states. Countries better prepared for the crisis do not want to bear the wrong, harmful decisions of countries that are exposed to the risk of gas blackmail, such as Germany, while we are all in the communal vessel system and it is in the interest of all of us to save gas, so that there is more of it for the winter. The European Commission only calls for solidarity when it is in its interest, says MEP Bogdan Roncha. The other way around, there is no such will to support. While we are waiting for money from the National Reconstruction Plan, this solidarity is not there, and under any pretext that money that Poland has long been entitled to is withheld. The regulation will be in force for one year, with the possibility of extension until May next year.